starting with some simple definitions. Urinary tract infections, or UTIs, describe an inflammatory response of the urethelium at any point along the urinary tract, typically as a result of the presence of a bacterial infection. Cystitis is when inflammation and infection is located within the bladder. Whereas acute pyelonephritis is an acute inflammation of the kidney and involves bacterial infection of the renal parenchyma. Acute pyelonephritis can be a very serious condition and has the potential to put the kidney at risk and in the most severe cases can also be life-threatening. The presence of bacteria in the urine is referred to as bacteria and it may be either asymptomatic or symptomatic. Bacteria is found in about 4% of young females. However, it's far more common in elderly women in whom it has an incidence of about 20 to 30%. In men, bacteria is far less common. However, in the elderly male population, the incidence is approximately 10%, and this is typically related to the presence of prostatic disease. Moving on with our definitions. Pyuria is the presence of white cells in the urine, and it occurs as a result of the inflammatory response of the urethelium due to the presence of bacterial infection. We can further describe urinary tract infections as being either uncomplicated or complicated. In uncomplicated cases, this is the presence of an infection within a structurally normal urinary tract. Whereas in complicated cases, there's an underlying abnormality in the structure or function of the urinary tract. For example, in a patient who has a urinary tract stone. And these underlying abnormalities have the potential to increase the complexity and severity of the underlying infection. Moving on to pathophysiology. When we look at urinary tract infections and pyelonephritis, there are three primary routes of infection. They can be ascending, hematogenous, for example, in a patient who has infective endocarditis, and they can also be lymphatic. By far and away, the most common route for infection is through the ascending route. So let's take a closer look at this. With an ascending infection, bacteria move from the lower end of the urinary tract, so the urethra and bladder, superiorly to affect the kidneys. In young females, this typically occurs in the presence of a normal urinary tract. However, in the older male patient group, this ascending infection is most commonly associated with the underlying impairment of the drainage of urine. Regarding some potential causes of impairment of urinary tract outflow, these include a physical obstruction of the tract, reflux of urine, and pregnancy. To understand how impairment of the urinary tract drainage can increase the risk of infection, we can use a very simple analogy of a stream flowing with water. Now, if you picture a fast-flowing stream, the constant movement of water means that there's no risk of any pooling or stagnation. And as a result, the water within the fast-flowing stream remains crystal clear and does not get dirty or infected. However, when we introduce an obstruction or some other cause that may potentially impair the drainage or flow of the stream, this can result in pooling of water. This pooled water can then become stagnant and infection is able to take over. So it's the same principle as that which can lead to ascending infections. However, having an obstruction of the urinary tract can actually complicate things even further. As the blockage also can result in increased pressure within the renal collecting system, which as well as potentially reducing the blood supply to the kidneys, also increases the risk that bacteria can be pushed back into the blood or lymph vessels and thus causing the patient to become systemically unwell. Additionally, as the blockage of the urinary tract will also affect the function of the kidney, this can make it even harder to treat the infection with antibiotics, as these would normally rely on excretion into the urine to target 
and be effective against the bacterial infection. The most common bacteria that can lead to urinary tract infections and pyelonephritis is E. coli. E. coli is a gram-negative anaerobic bacteria that is typically found within the lower intestines. In terms of their general features, E. coli are rod-shaped and some strains have flagella, which are tail-like projections, which allow them to move around. And also, importantly, the body of E. coli are surrounded by pili. These pili aid the attachment of the bacteria to the urothelium and as a result, increase the ability of E. coli to infiltrate these cells and subsequently cause infection. As well as this adhesion mechanism, other factors which can increase the virulence of bacteria include the ability to avoid host defences, resistance to antimicrobials or antibiotics, and also a diminished host response. For example, if the patient has an immunodeficiency disease,